Hello everyone, Science Viking here, and we're back to Final Fantasy IX. And also, I'm just noticing this, this room has the wrong music. This is this should have the Lindblom Grand Castle music, but it has the Lindblom City music instead. I I have never noticed that before. Was it always this way? And I just never noticed, or did they change that for the PC version or something? Anyway, let's talk to Mog Key and find out. He has a letter for us. He wants us to deliver a letter to Kumu. Well, I think we can do that. Now, we were told at the end of the last part that Sid wanted to talk to us, so let's head up to the upper level. And now we're back to the proper music again. I wonder what the deal is with that. And we can just hop in the elevator. We don't need to steal the clothes and nose of an officer in order to get up here this time. And I, I meant get to the upper level. And this time we are headed for the conference room. Who's that guy? It's Regent Sid. What? Still hasn't got any manners, Rip. <clears throat> Still haven't learned your manners. You can stop the frog talk now. S Silence, Ribbit. Oh well. Ugh. I didn't gather you all to talk about that. I called this meeting to tell you about what I learned while in Kuja's captivity. It may provide a hint about where he may be. Listen carefully. I don't see the princess. I shall look for her. I will begin constructing Hildegard III. The, the blue Narciss will be used for its construction. Now, Hilda will tell you the rest. Hilda? So, what did Kuja discuss with you? Some parts of the story may be hard to believe, but please hear me out. Kuja plans to use this world as a means of acquiring an even greater power. Greater power? What would he do with it? I don't know. He indicated that he wasn't of this world. What? We call our world Gaia. But he called his birthplace Terra. Terra, huh? Yep, Kuja's an alien. And now we have an active time event. Power of the repair is coming. They're going really slow. We can't rush him, or everything will probably fall apart again. We're not getting anywhere. I've been up here forever. I want to switch places with someone. I guess the damage is a lot worse than we expected. Huh? She's not here, either. Where could she be? Yo. Oh, it's only you. Why are you all gathered here? Are you scheming another abduction or something? Hey, watch your mouth. We were just discussing ways to restore this district. Yeah. Oh, timer, you got us all wrong. Yeah. We're just trying to rebuild our home. That's all. What are you doing here? From the looks on your face, it seems like you got problems. What's troubling you? Maybe we can help. Er, can I really trust you? Yeah. Well, if he says he's trustworthy, he must be trustworthy. That, that's that's how that's how that works, actually. If someone tells you that you can trust them, it's true. I mean, they wouldn't lie after all. They're trustworthy. The princess is missing. She's not in the castle, so I figured she would be in town. Why don't you go back to the castle before you get lost? What? 
We'll find her. This is like our backyard. All right, you heard me. Get moving. And the team fans out to search for Garnet. You have my gratitude. Hey, no problem. This terra seems to be connected with a place called the Shimmering Island. I don't know where Kuja went, but maybe we can find him if we go there. Unfortunately, you can't get directly to Terra from the Shimmering Island. Of course you can't. Everyone would have discovered this other world by now if it was that easy. So what do we do? I'll tell you. The gateway that connects the two worlds is sealed. But Kuja said there is a place where the seal can be broken. Where's that? He said it's an old castle located in the northern area of the Forgotten Continent. An explorer left a record of his trip to this particular castle on the Forgotten Continent. If I remember correctly, he wrote that the cliffs were too steep to explore. Other than that, very little is known about the Forgotten Continent. Which I suppose explains how Oilvert went upon unnoticed. Also, little thing to remember, Oilvert talked about the history of a world called Terra. So Oilvert is somehow connected to the place that Kuja came from. Let's file that bit of information away for later, shall we? Well... Since this castle doesn't have a name, let's call it Ibsen's Castle. Ibsen's Castle, huh? Yeah, we don't know anything about the world beyond our continent. And another active time event, Recovery. How is the ship coming along? Regent, you're human again! Yes, now I now we can concentrate on building the ship. Judging by our experience with Hilda 2, we are almost finished with the engine. We are having problems with the construction of the hull, though. Yes, I'm thinking about using the parts of the Blue Narcissus for the body. How come? I realized that the Blue Narcissus was a well-built ship when I rode it. There are other reasons, but we must hurry. I already have a completed blueprint in my head. Do as I tell you, and it will be completed in no time. Sid is finally properly in his element, as an engineer. That's all I heard. You may find a clue if you go to Ibsen's castle. Did you ask Kudra about all of this? These are all things he discussed voluntarily. He became very impassioned as he spoke. And he volunteered information without even my asking. He probably thought telling me his plans wouldn't affect his grand scheme. Well, let's hope we can prove him wrong. He's right. His power is great, and we're at a disadvantage. But I can't forgive Kuja! He toyed with my friends' lives! Now we know where we need to go. The problem is getting there. I guess we'll have to wait until Sid finishes building Hildegard 3. Zidane, I bring troubling news! What? What now? I cannot find the princess. I've looked all over Lindbergh. The members of Tantalus aided me in my search, but... She's not in Lindblom? Kind of shows how much faith Zidane has in his team. So if Tantalus can't find her, she's just not in the city. Then there's only one place. Do you know where she is? I think so. You guys wait here in Lindblom. I'll be right back. And Zidane just kind of quick pops over to Alexandria. And this team is still looking for Dagger, but now they're in Alexandria too. 
which seems fine, and because it all happens off screen, until you remember that um, that airships don't work right now. So <laughs> this this seems like it'd be quite a hike to just go from Lindblom to Alexandria, presumably on foot. I don't know. Maybe he took a boat. But I think that would still take a while. Hey, Ruby. Blank. Marcus, how y'all doing? We're doing all right. How's show business, Ruby? Well, the money ain't no good, but I'm having fun. I like it. That's great. Our hideout in Lindblom got completely destroyed. It's gonna take a miracle to fix that place. Bro, we better... Oh, sorry. We came to Alexandria for a reason. Have you seen Dagger? Dagger? No, I ain't seen her. What about, what about her? You fixing to kidnap her again? No, we're just looking for her this time. I was only kidding, Marcus. I'll ask the patrons to be on the lookout. Thanks, Ruby. I wonder if Zidane is here with those good old boys. And he is. This is strange. I was sure that she'd be back in Alexandria. Where else can I look? Hey, Zidane. I've been looking for you. Boss, have you found Dagger? Nah. Can't find her anywhere. Didn't find Dagger, but... I think I saw that chick. That chick? Yeah, you know. That chick! Very, very informative, Baku. That, that... We now know exactly who you're talking about. Where are you going, boss? Is she here? She was standing over there just a second ago. Over there. And from the theme music, we know who they're talking about. It's Beatrix. Is that who I think it is? And using the magic of off-screen teleportation, Zidane goes down a flight of stairs into the foreground and arrives in the background somehow without having passed Beatrix in the process of doing so. And now he's over there. It's like a stage play where he runs through a door in the stage into, like, the backstage area, runs through the backstage area, and comes out a different door. Where'd she go? And now she's back up there. Still alive, eh? You are... Baku? Yep, I'm the man who abducted your princess. Not the kind of thing you should be admitting right now, Baku. Let us forget about that. It happened a long time ago. Baku, I think you don't understand quite how lucky you are. You just admitted to kidnapping royalty to the person who is in charge of executing people who try to kidnap royalty. You are one lucky bastard. As you can see, Alexandria was completely destroyed. Steiner and I did our best to protect Alexandria. But our efforts were in vain. Steiner was worried about you. Why haven't you contacted him? Dagger's still in shock. She must have... She's been mute ever since the attack. She is? Then it is better for her not to return to the city for a while. It won't do her any good to see Alexandria like this. Well, here's the thing. We can't find her. I thought she'd be back here, but I can't find her anywhere. She is back in Alexandria? But she's nowhere to be found... Have you looked at the resting place? Resting place? Yes. If she is back in Alexandria, I am certain that she will be there. There are a couple of favors I'd like to ask you. If you see Princess Garnet, please tell us not to tell her not to worry about Alexandria. She must take care of herself first. Sure. What else? 
I'd like you to give something to her. I received a garnet. Maybe it will help the princess get through this time of uncertainty. And we now know what Beatrix meant by the resting place. Brawny's grave. I've been looking for you, Dagger. Zidane! You can talk again? I... I've been thinking since the disaster. I've been thinking that I have to become queen and bring back peace to Alexandria. That's why I came back here, but... Can I stay with you guys for a while longer? Can I ask why? When my mother was still alive, my primary concern was how to talk and look like a princess. Those were the only things on my mind. That didn't change when my mother died and I was about to become a queen. I only thought about how to look and act like a queen. I don't think the people will accept me as their queen the way I am right now. I don't know about that. I have no right to rule over this country. Hmm. Oh, I almost forgot. Beatrix wanted me to give this to you. Is this a garnet? That's right. Isn't it pretty? It's beautiful. That gem used to be just another ordinary stone. The stone made a wish. I want to shine. The stone traveled from person to person in keeping with its wish. And now it's shining in your hand, Dagger. If you're willing to make an effort, You'll shine too someday. The day will come when Alexandria needs you. There's no rush. The important thing is to have the desire. Thanks. I have to apologize for using you guys as an excuse to run away from my responsibilities. Hey, what's important is that you honestly want to stay with us. Zidane? Can I borrow that knife again? Which one? I have so many. The one that helped me make my last big decision. I'm borrowing this. Zidane? Remember the way I was. For me. And... Important haircut time. And showing off the new look. And we transition from that to the newly reborn Hildegard III. Ready for takeoff. What, 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 what happened? What happened to your hair? Princess, what have you done? Uh, I know. Zidane broke your heart, didn't he? How dare he? 
Holy jumping to conclusions, Batman! Oh, hold on. Don't see Zidane gets it. D dial back the conclusion jump. Zidane's right, Aiko. Dagger, you can talk again. Yes. I'm sorry I made you all worry. It's okay, but your hair was so beautiful. Short hair doesn't suit me? Oh no, you look great. Thanks, Aiko. It's still too early to celebrate. Aaron, you know our destination? Yes, Ibsen's castle on the Forgotten Continent. That's right. We'll go there to find out how to enter Terra through the Shimmering Island. I'm sure we'll find out more about what's going on once we reach Terra. Yeah, and hopefully we'll learn about what Kuja wants to achieve. The location of Ibsen's castle has been marked on the map based on Lady Hilda's information. Please check by pressing 1 after we depart. You can also press X on the bright spots on the map and the ship will take you to those locations automatically. You can check how to maneuver the ship automatically by pressing V while the large map is open. Excuse me. Please let me know if you'd like to switch out your party members. I shall assist in any way that I can during your trip. You don't have to be so formal. Let's just relax and enjoy our flight. Now we can put together our party. I'm definitely putting the newly recovered dagger, who has earned herself a new character board. Let's drop in Vivi and... Freya's been warming the bench a lot lately. Let's bring her. Though Quinna is even lower level. And we have controls. X to move forward, V to go to the deck, V to move back. C to uh, disembark, and then one to the navigational map, G and H are camera control, and we can even align the camera. Well, we have an airship now. And if we fly over to this glowing dot, fly past a giant tornado that will be important later, we see Oilford and Choco, which is the actual meaning of that glowing dot, is that that's where Choco is. However, we fly a ways to the north, we find ourselves having flown past Ibsen's castle. I'm not lost, you're lost! And I meant to open the map. Uh, yes. Yes, five seconds in and I'm already lost. This is where Ibsen's castle is. Yep, here we are. And I'm not concealing a recording error, not at all. I would never do that to you guys. I would never attempt to hide an error in the recording process. Anyway... We've landed at Ibsen's castle, it's time to enter. Is this the old castle Hilda told us about? What a strange looking place. Like it's upside down or something. All right, I'll take three of you with me. The rest of you secure this spot. Hey, Zidane. What's up, Amarant? I work alone. Always have, always will. I don't know why you bother carrying dead weight all the time. What's your point? I'm saying working alone beats working in a team any day, and I'm going to prove it. Hilda said there's some key here to break the seal, am I right? Yeah. Let's see who finds it first. I'll be going by myself, of course. Amarant, you selfish, ignorant fool! Calm down, Rusty. But, but Yeah, I'll let him go. I don't know what you're thinking, but if that's what you want, it's okay by me. 
Well, aren't you an agreeable fellow? Well, see you later. Are you sure about this, Zidane? What can I do? I can't change the way he thinks. Let's get going, everyone. We'll beat Amarant at his own game. Well, he has a bit of a head start. And yep, this is the team we're going with. And into the castle. And this music is disorienting. And the chests are of the same design as the ones in Oil Hurt. And we received a dagger. And that's our first hint as to the gimmick of this area. Which this random encounter will allow me to demonstrate. Against a gargoyle and his mage friend. Now you see, the thing about this area is... Let's try attacking this guy with an egg. That did very little. Let's have Freya try the same thing. That also did very little. You see... The trick of this area is... Um, weapons have their effectiveness inverted, so stronger weapons are actually weaker, and weaker weapons are actually stronger. So since Zidane is equipping an actually pretty good weapon, he does very little damage. However, magic and also Freya's jump skill are immune to this. And also the gargoyle when he's not turning. The gar the Agares has the ability to bring the Gargoyle to life, allowing the Gargoyle to attack us. Now, there's another interesting trick with the Gargoyle. This can also happen with an enemy that you can encounter in Oil Vert, but we didn't encounter that enemy. Which is that the Gargoyle is a Stone type enemy. Now, if you use the Soft item on a Stone type enemy, something very interesting happens. They become too soft to live and die. Ooh, and Vivi's down. And yeah, Jump did a bit more like the kind of damage it should be doing. Lancer will also work in the same way. In fact, allow me to demonstrate. And Freya's in trance now. And I'll just have Zidane steal. Assuming the Agares lives long enough to be hit by that. lot of damage. <laughs> and the 387 damage from the Angel Bless finished the job. However, ooh, that's a lot of experience too. Freya leveled up twice. However, I don't want to keep Zidane equipping a powerful weapon in this area. So let's switch him to the dagger that we just acquired. Now, Freya, Vivi, and Dagger don't need to switch weapons because Vivi and Dagger attack primarily with magic, and um, while Freya is a physical attacker, she'll mostly be attacking with either Lancer or Jump, and they both ignore the attack power inversion of this place. 
We do need to manipulate some equipment a little bit, though. Alright, so... Uh, Sedane is the only one who isn't going to level up next. So... And for, I forgot, Freya is equipping nothing. Now let's move her to the Trident. Lamia's Tiara should be good. Mythical Gloves. May as well give her the Shield Armor. And the Ribbon actually gives pretty good stat bonuses. Actually, I don't want to give her the Ribbon. It gives too large of a bonus to Magic for me to give it to Freya. See the Kashusha for its bonus to speed, or the Barrette for its bonus to strength. I'll go with the Kashusha. Alright. Dagger, I believe, is already properly equipped, and Vivi also is. Uh, not quite. We're on the Magician Robe. And I know Dagger is already equipping the Pumice Piece, which is the right one. Yep, she has the right equipment. So it was really just Freya that needed a change. And... Do not be restricted by your knowledge and experience. This place turns logic upside down. What's big is small, what's strong is weak, and heaven is earth. Yep, that's meant to clue you in to the fact that weapons have their effectiveness reversed. And we have a Moogle. Kumu. Well, we have a letter for Kumu. A letter? Koopa. How unusual. I'm so happy, Koopa. From Mogki to Kumu. Hey, Kumu, how are you? Us Moogles in Lindblom are all wondering the same thing these days. Where the heck is Mognet Central? No one knows, Kubo. Do you know where it is, Kumu? It's supposedly very far away, and you can't enter very easily. I heard that you can't enter Mognet Central unless you're riding on a chocobo. Well, well conveniently, we have... A uh, chocobo. And Kumul sells weak weapons that we can equip to. Uh... Kumul sells weak weapons that we can equip to uh, get better damage. Fortunately, we have even weaker weapons that we just already own. I am going to buy another set of Demon's Mail to equip to Freya. Otherwise, we're pretty good for buying things. However,. We've been recording for a fair while yet, so I am going to get us up a fresh recording file in hopes of warding off the recording issue demons. I will be back in a moment. Alright, we are back with a lovely fresh recording file. Now it's time to proceed through Ibsen's Castle. Most of the treasure chests in this dungeon are really rather ones. They all just contain um, the starting equipment, like the weakest weapon available for a character. And the main purpose of them is to tip you off to the uh, gimmick of this area. But once you've equipped the characters you're actually going to use for this dungeon, there's really no point in bothering to collect most of the chests. Except for the one that's on screen now. We'll actually have to come back to that one later. But actually, because of that, this is actually a fairly short dungeon. There's a lot of side paths the vast majority of which lead to chests containing weapons you don't really want to bother with. So for instance, once we get to this ladder, we just climb down. Then we hop on this ladder and we climb up. And we continue climbing up. And it really feels like I should be able to get off at this landing. But if I jump off the ladder, I end up here instead, which is not where we want to be. But yep, I just decided to move to the other ladder. But if we go through this doorway, we're basically there. We just take this elevator, and we have arrived at the end of the dungeon in a minute and 30 seconds. Yeah, Ibsen's castle is rather short as long as you don't get lost. And like I said, there's not a whole lot worth finding in it. You're late, Zidane, and I'm the winner. 
See how much time you lose by working with others? Yeah, I, it looks like I lost a whole 10 to 15 seconds. Have you figured out how to break the seal? Take a look at that wall. Maybe you can figure it out. But it's no longer my concern. What do you mean? I proved myself right. I don't need to follow you around anymore. We may be enemies the next time we meet. See ya. Oh, he's gone. It's his way. We can't change him. Let's get going. And now we get to examine this room. And... Let's see. There's something written on it. My power is protected under the shaking ground. So we have the Earth Mirror. My power is protected behind a tornado. That's the Wind Mirror. My power is protected underwater, surrounded by the Earth. That's the Water Mirror. And by process of elimination. My power is protected high atop a fiery mountain. We have the fire mirror. Well, we can safely assume that those are our key to unlocking the secrets of the Shimmering Island. Well, looks like we got what we came for. Let's go. We were staring at that mirror for a long time. Anything interesting? Like Hilda said, those things on the wall must have something to do with the seal. Let's think about that later. We need to get out. Mirror, return to me. Who's there? Energy flow interrupted. Energy to Terra. You dare get in the way of Terra's master plan? What's this? My name is Taharka. Return my mirrors. You should say please when you ask for things. Yeah, because returning stolen property is really something you have to ask nicely for. Well, it's gonna be a boss fight. We're not giving the mirrors back, they're our only clue. This is a relatively straightforward fight. In a relatively straightforward dungeon, Odin isn't going to do us any good, though. And that would have actually done pretty okay damage if it had hit, because, because of the attack power inverting thing, um, Dagger's physical attack is actually fairly strong this time. She is still the meta, The main thing about this boss that makes it not particularly challenging is that he just doesn't have very much fire. Tarka's ability to cause damage, or Taharka's ability to cause damage is okay, but like, this is his strongest attack, and it really just is nothing special. I mean, I can imagine him being a bit more challenging if he didn't break BB because he's quite resistant to physical damage. Though Zidane still manages to hit him pretty hard. But... 
who doesn't bring Vivi? And Vivi, Vivi's magic power can really pretty much trivialize this fight. Also, now that we have the Mithril Claws, there's really no reason to continue stealing from this guy. So we can switch Zidane over to attacking. And let's break out Rama, too. And Dagger is once again calling upon the power of the beard. 1800 damage. And that is the end of that. I didn't even get to demonstrate one of his other abilities, which is Taharka has the ability to go into like a defensive mode, where he curls up, and when he does that he becomes basically immune to physical damage, but he doesn't get any increased defense against magic, so even then, just bringing Vivi with you pretty much trivializes this fight. I suppose if you really wanted a challenge, maybe come in with a team of um, Zidane, Steiner, Freya, and then I either Quina or one of the two white mages, that would make this fight a lot more difficult. But a boss fight that's only hard because you deliberately picked a poorly suited team is really not a hard boss fight. One is all. All is one. You'll never break the seal. Also, before we proceed, I want to change daggers. Actually, never mind. She's close to leveling up. I'll keep her equipped the way she is. However, now that we have the mirrors, we can examine this wall. Well, we've examined it. Let's try pushing it. Well, let's try pounding it. Well, we've done all the obvious stuff, so now it's time to resort to extreme measures. We're gonna think about it. Yeah, yeah, I should've known thinking wouldn't work. Let's try pounding on it again. Now let's push. Well, we've tried all the obvious stuff, let's try something drastic. You know, the way he reacts afterward, it looks like he hurt his foot. Well, Zidane needs a break after all that exertion, so... Whoa! So, after all that, leaning on it is what causes it to open. Well, in here we find a barrette. Not the most amazing treasure in the world, but still useful. And, now we leave the dungeon. I suppose it's nice that the uh, dungeon isn't really that complicated, or rather that the necessary path you have to follow to reach the end isn't that long, because there's no shortcut to get out of here, and we're not teleported out of here after completing the mission like usual, so we do have to walk all the way back out. Well, I can spare a minute and a half. I'm honestly surprised we haven't had any random encounters yet. I know the encounter rates in this game are kind of low, but I would have expected to have at least one. Also, let's look at this thing for a moment, the thing with the treasure chest on top of it. 
It is being held up by chains. But if you actually look at the chains, well, they're not like metal rods that should be holding it up against the force of gravity. They actually look like chains. Like, gravity is backwards for this thing compared to everything else in the room. I guess another way in which this castle is upside down. And we have an enemy. An enemy with a hilarious overbite. This is the uh, veteran. That that is how you that is how it's spelled. I feel like that was probably that name was probably intended to be something else, and the spelling of it just came out weird due to translation. Because calling a floating eye enemy a veteran just seems really strange. Also, it casts Doom on Freya, which is actually rather convenient for me because, as we learned during the fight with Mark, Freya is considered to be out of the fight while she's in the air from using jump. Which means if she gets hit by, uh... Which means that the Doom counter will not progress while she's in the air from, uh, using jump. So it takes extra long for her to die because of Doom. And that's the end of the fight. These things aren't terribly dangerous. And we found a topaz. Oh, let's climb back out of here. And there are trapdoors on the floor now. How clever. We must have activated the trap when we reached the top. Well, I'm glad you're okay. Let's go. They're waiting for us outside. Yep, so now we have to avoid the trap doors. Except we actually kind of have to not avoid the trap doors. Because you saw that chest earlier. Falling through one of these is the only way to get to it. And that's the one. And we have obtained the Maiden see what exactly that does. It is an item that has a nice fragrance. It gives okay stats, not as good as the pumice piece, but it also teaches auto regen. Not the best item in the world, but not bad. Just our reward for being a little clever. Now we just hop off of here. And... Climb back up again, after fighting another monster. Ah, these guys. Well, they give a pretty good bounty of experience, and they're really easy to take out. Let's just make the gargoyle too soft to live. And we've pretty much already won this one. It's just a matter of wearing through the Agarist's hit points, and he doesn't really have much of a health. Of course, freezing Zidane will be a bit of a problem, since Zidane is our best damage dealer. Well, at least he is in this fight. That does it. And we got a sapphire for that one. 
powering up Eidolons we haven't actually used yet. However, now that Dagger is leveled up, I want to equip her with the Garnet. Because the Garnet, which Zidane gave to her during this episode, actually, if you remember, gives her the ability to summon Bahamut. Yep, the Eidolon that killed Brawny and destroyed Alexandria? He's on our side now. Anyway, we've fallen through the only trapdoor it's profitable to fall through, so let's try to avoid the rest of them as we head back to the entrance. And now, you'll notice this was not here before, but now there's a stairwell which can take us all the way back to the mirror room. On a previous take, I actually got really confused because I thought that stairwell was activated by breaking through this door, but it was actually not. In addition to that, we also have this stairwell, which is how we get up here. We will actually be coming back for this, but that will be in another episode. We're actually going to have to come back to Ibsen's castle anyway for a different reason, so for now we can leave them. Hey, sorry to keep you all waiting. So Zidane wins this game. What? What happened to Amarant? He was waiting for us at the top and left as soon as we got there. I thought he took off. Is he still inside? You guys wait here. I'm gonna go look for him. So it looks like our contest isn't over yet. Amarat may have reached the top faster, but he seems to have gotten stuck somewhere. And well, the fastest way to reach him is to jump into this hole. And we go down here. And there he is. Zidane, why did you come back? Amarant, what happened to you? Answer my question. I told you we might be enemies next time we met. Or did you come back to mock me? You say some strange things. And also, Amarant, I never noticed this before, but you have an absurdly long neck. I'm wondering if that's his character model doing something weird because he's laying on an inclined surface, but look at that neck! That is... That is a neck if I've ever seen one before. The guys outside told me that you hadn't come out yet. That's why I came here looking for you. I mean, that is a neck that is going places. You don't have anything more, anything to do with each other anymore. You don't have anything to gain from this. Or do you? I don't understand you. I don't understand the way you think. Who cares about what I have to gain? You need help right now. You don't care? You're willing to put yourself at risk to save me? Come on, we've helped each other many times since we joined forces. You're a part of the team. That's all that matters. I don't know why I'm doing this, but I can't just walk away. It goes against my nature. And that's what being part of a team means? Isn't it? Come on, that's enough talk. Let's get out of here. And so now we control Zidane and Amarant as we get ourselves out of this dungeon. Fortunately, we're already near the entrance. Just need to avoid the remainder of the trapdoors. Fortunately, they stay open after you trigger them. And we're home free! Listen up, everyone. Let's sort out what we found in the castle. With another remix of the title theme. So Oilvert had a remix of the title theme. Ibsen's Castle had a very disturbing sounding remix of the game's title theme. And now we have a... What all, a yet another remix of the title theme. On top of the castle is a mural. A map of the world. It 
were four mirrors on the mural. The writing on the mirrors was in the language only I can read. My power is protected under the shaking ground. My power is protected behind a tornado. My power is protected high atop a fiery mountain. And my power is protected underwater, surrounded by the earth. I'm sure the mirrors are pointing us to the locations that help us break the seal. What the monster said before he perished provided us with a clue about the seal. One is all, all is one. Meaning there is a connection between these four seals. So what do we do? Wrong voices. So what do we do? Are we going to take each location, one by one? One is all, all are one. We're going to conquer all four locations at once. We're not going together like we always do? No. I'm going to drop off two of us in each location. I see. Hey, I'll go with Dagger. What? Why? Yeah, cause, yeah, let's put the two white mages on a mission together. There's absolutely no way that can go wrong. It's called Ladies First today. D yeah, because that's that's totally a good reason. Uh-huh, is that okay with you, Dagger? Sure, but... Why, where are we going first? Well, the nearest location would be... One of the locations you mentioned is just south of us. Oh, you were listening to us? I've been a sailor for a long time. I'm confident in my sense of direction. My power is protected underwater, surrounded by the earth. The location must have something to do with water. Why not go there first? Alright. Thanks for your help. Please, don't hesitate to ask me if you forget about your destination. And please, remember to equip yourselves properly while we are on board. You can relax, buddy. You're beginning to sound like someone I know. Alright, Aaron. Let's go. Yes, sir. Now departing. And, back to the original team for now. However, as we're winding up to unlock the mystery of Tinra, this is going to be the end for this part. We've been at this for quite a while, we've accomplished a fair amount, so this is going to be the end of this episode. Thank you all for watching, I love you all, and I will see you next time.